I would like to talk about ME and research that's gone into it. So you might be wondering, what on earth is this up here? It's about computer programming. Now, in computer programming, it is probably, to me, the only science that is, it either works or it doesn't. There can't be any in-betweens. So, for example, in this program here, if you take away a bracket or a apostrophe or a full stop or some semicolon, something like that, it won't work. The whole thing results in, um, it's a bit like when uh, there was a, a mission to the moon, I think it was, some space thing where there was one dot in a thousands of words of code, and that was the thing that it, it failed. But in real science and that, this is the only computer science like this program is the only science to me that is, is perfect as it can be. So if we go to this here in ME, there's been, people say, oh, well, uh, you know, there hasn't been that much research done. And there's been decades of research. There's been 70, probably 80 years that, that I'm aware of that there's been lots of research in ME, but it's very conflicting. And that just this is um, about uh, B12 study in ME. And it says at the end there, I've highlighted it, so conflict of interest statement. So the competing interests, the authors have declared that there's no competing interests exists. So what that means is that are they working for someone else or so they get a result that, you know, that goes for them. And I guess where they paid and things like that. So just because somebody puts a white coat on, it doesn't mean that they don't have a bias. And it doesn't also mean that these people aren't genuine. We're, we're, we're just human. Science is perfect, scientists aren't. And this is where there's a difficulty with ME. Go to this slide here where it says about essential fatty acids. So we're going to back a little bit here. And I think many veterans of ME and, and that will know about uh, the study. And it's about 1990, so it's 31 years ago, Professor Behan, Peter Behan and colleagues at University of Glasgow carried out a placebo controlled trial involving 63 patients with positive um, with post viral fatigue syndrome. FMR Marine was used, and FMR Marine is quite an expensive product. Um, so, and what they found is like so there were significant differences between this and the control. And I think by our the books have gone away on, on MA, the MA books. Um, and I think it was 85%. I could be wrong on that, but I think it was 80 something percent. And I think 85% it was where positive outcome, I think yeah, over three months in the positive outcome. However, a second placebo control trial was carried out in 1999 at the University of Sheffield. Uh, oh dear, and uh, they found that there was no significant difference and they used the exact thing that Peter Behan and his colleagues used um, and they didn't find any significant difference between a control group. Although the control group was given a different product to the Behan one, still they didn't find any significant difference. So what were we supposed to say on that? And Again, off memory, I believe it was around 40 to 45% of people with ME actually had a bit of a difference. But 45 to 85 is a big, big difference. Um, I know Peter Behan's done other work where there's definitely he's getting different outcomes to different other researchers. So I don't know. I mean, like these people... You know, I mean, they dedicate their lives and a lot of researchers in MA are definitely genuine people. Um, you know, there's, there's people who are like, like Judy Mitrovich and um, Sarah Myhill who think outside the box. And, and to me, thinking outside the box is probably what's going to conquer this thing if it ever does. I, I don't believe personally that it will, but, you know, I think that's, uh, you know, a lot of things are being tried, virology, immunology, and all sorts of things are being tried in MA and really, really haven't gotten anywhere. So, John Richardson. Now, he's dead now. He's been dead in uh, 2002. So, yeah. Um, I knew John, uh, Dr. John Richardson. I used to go and see him. He was, a, he was an absolute gent. You know, he was a lovely, lovely man. 
and he's been he's been working on ME I think since the 1950s and if I'm not mistaken his daughter had some episode of ME or, or similar um this is uh, I mean I haven't I didn't see him for like it's about 30 years 20 27 28 years I don't know um and what he really thought was um very good that was going to happen was something called viral protein test which is supposed to test for enterovirus infection he did acknowledge that having a viral protein test which was done by it was invented by a chap called james mowbray who i think is still alive professor james mowbray so you got your your test and you sent it he sent it down to james mowbray to test and see whether you tested positive for an enterovirus test now the problem with antivirus tests is that the the um, it doesn't test whether you've just got a cold. It, it, see, I think John Richardson and his group at Newcastle, uh, he had the Newcastle uh, Research Foundation, I think it was, and there was about six doctors, and um, he uh, they believed that ME is a chronic antiviral infection. I I. I I mean, like, so, like me, I mean, uh, like, uh, I mean, I question John Richardson, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm that type of person. If something doesn't really fit or, or, you know, I think, well, there's, you know, different ways to look at certain things. I I always have to question them, doesn't matter if the experts are not. And, and I think, I think ME is caused by many different paths to get at the same symptoms. But that doesn't mean that, those paths. If somebody actually conquered this thing, I think you know it could um, it could be treating the symptoms rather than whatever the cause is. Like you can get there's a million ways to have a broken leg, but I mean you know that's the same treatment. Um, but he did believe that, and I've got a book just before he died. And I think it's actually mentioned in this uh, MEpedia thing, ME Action Encyclopedia, it's called. And he said uh, that he believed at that time and before his death that 95% of people with ME was caused by antiviral infection. Um, I, uh, I don't think so. Like, but anyway, I mean, he was, he was absolutely brilliant. I mean, he helped me, um, diagnose me and, and, you know, I have the utmost respect for him and that, you know, he's a crack and he was a crack and man. Um, but, you know, and he also used to treat people with uh, immunoglobulin G and something called uh, oh, that's for CH. I can't remember. Um, I don't know. It was there was a chemist near where we lived where you used to go in and you used to get this big bottle of of stuff that you used to have to take a few times a day, and um, you know, you used to get it for absolutely next to nothing because Dr. John Richardson had this. Uh, you know, he used to, he had this like sort of thing with the, the chemist itself. So yeah, anyway, we move on. So here about the the VP one. Um, so it says thirty. This is uh, about chronic fatigue syndrome, major depression. The monospot VP one test in chronic fatigue syndrome and major depression. Thirty four patients with CFS were compared with controls with major depression on, on the monospot and VP1 antigen tests. So in this one I've highlighted again in red, there was no significant differences in the numbers initially uh, VP1 tests, 11 out of 34 in the chronic fatigue and seven out of 34 in the chronic fatigue. Um, yeah, so seven in the major depression. So you see what I mean? It says at the end, uh, the monospot and VP1 test test appear to have little discriminating ability between these groups as a screening test, and their predictive validity is unclear. And again, it's back to John Richardson. It's called the Busperin Challenge Test. So the Busperin Challenge Test is a, is a drug, and it's a 5-HT, which is a brain thing, and uh, it has to do with 5-HT uh, uh, serotonin receptor ag agonist, is orally administered and um if we go down on here and actually leave a link to this again it's a me action encyclopedia thing and this is just give me a second so in 1992 there was a study um and i'm not going to read all this but yeah i'll i'll you know i'll put it in the description so you can read it 
Um, yeah. So there was a study in 92. John Richardson did a one in 95, another one in 95, and another one in 96, and also another one in 2001. Now, I think this is probably something that's underrated because to me, they seem to be getting the similar type of things. But just because you get a test, it again, that doesn't mean that you've got a treatment, but it certainly could help people to, um, you know, to, to actually get tested so that you you believe in these type of things but that uh, that seems to have gone off the radar a little bit the bus brand thing but i think that's something that we really you know it's something that I, I don't know the whole story of how it's uh you know if it's how like say a gp would do it or anything like that but uh, I, I do think that's something that we should be starting to look back at and, and just to see where we are with that but yeah so i just thought i'd do this uh, do this video because it's interesting to me and it's not just john richardson i've been in studies with um there are other things that i've, I've been uh, i've seen researchers and stuff like that and i'm a statistics person like i like to um you know criticize really and, and it's not being criti criticizing for the sake of it i like to say when when like a study comes out i like to say what what you know anybody could make a statement like a research could make a statement um and then when you like dig deeper or there's a lot of things that don't really make sense with them so yeah so i just uh just thought that uh, and the other another study i was on was on about uh, the the temporal mandibular thing which is this here now i get i get attacks i wouldn't say i go all the time but i get attacks of temporal mandibular joint pain and I was on a study about that, and it was, uh, I think many of you will know about Professor Julia Newton at Newcastle. Um, and it was through her that I, I was on this uh, study. And to be quite honest, it was a two-year study. Quite honest, I still don't know what the results of that was. And that was a few years ago now. So, you know, it, is, it does take a long time for papers to be released and stuff like that. But, you know, for me, if you're going to, find treatment and stuff like that it needs to be over a, over a period of time i mean let's hear more speed i mean if the people are going to you know for example if people are going to die with something and you might as well just like take anything but you know so just in case something works but um and there has been people that's died with me unfortunately but usually with a secondary condition so anyway i just uh, thought i'd bring that to your attention and, and uh i would you know, I, would, I hope that some people uh, have some comments about all this because it's, it, it affects all of us, really. So, again, thanks for watching.